more often than not, attempts at restoring a community are denounced by opposition as gentrification, destroying the culture and flavor of an area in favor of catering to a newer upscale crowd and their interests. Walk around Rogers Park in the mix of old and new is apparent. When I was a little kid, Jarvis was a really active, functional, booming commercial street. And that's what I remember it as. It was a good place. It was safe. I felt comfortable here. The sound of the L always made me feel like I was at home. It was not threatening. It was great. Property owner Dan Sullivan fondly remembers his childhood summers spent visiting his grandmother in Rogers Park. After moving from the Chicago area, his visits were less frequent, but he always felt that Rogers Park was his home. When he returned in 1991 and bought the property previously owned by his grandmother, the Rogers Park he found was vastly different. And the sidewalks were so dirty. I mean, every day, beer bottles and wine bottles and broken glass and cigarette butts all over the place and trash, and, and I'd go out and I'd clean it every day. I'd spend hours out there just cleaning it. And I did it on purpose because I thought, It'll show that somebody cares. It'll show that somebody considers this to be theirs. My ties to Rogers Park are very special. I grew up in the neighborhood. My father had a business here. This area, Howard Street, and was called the drug corridor between Chicago and Evanston. Right, I mean, this is a perfect corner to sell drugs. It was beautiful. You had, you had a cash uh, checking place over there so they could get cash real quick. You had a, a place that was selling alcohol to anybody of any ages, real cheap. There was a laundromat where you could bring in huge bags of things and walk away with huge bags of things and no one looked what was inside of it. I mean, if you were going to write a case study in how to run a distribution business for something illicit, this is it. It's perfect. I'm just thinking back to when I was a, a teacher at the school and one day I was tutoring eighth grade children, boys, and they said to me, one boy said to me, I'm a street pharmacist. I said, oh, I said, that's interesting. My father was a pharmacist. He had a drugstore in the neighborhood. And the boys go to, oh, Mrs. Hirsch, you're such a dummy. You don't know what a street pharmacist is. I said, yes, I do. Dan Sullivan and other private business owners have taken it upon themselves to revitalize Rogers Park by bringing in businesses that contribute to the community aesthetic they hope to project and promote. Most of the store fronts have changed. There were, uh, if I, were, I counted once, there were 13 different businesses that have changed in the last five years. So, you know, it's and it, maybe it, maybe a succinct way to say it is that the people who used to feel comfortable outside on the sidewalks now, they feel uncomfortable here. The people who used to be uncomfortable on the sidewalks now feel comfortable here. Rogers Park resident Tom Manis is a freelance writer who often blogs about Rogers Park happenings on his website, The Bench. Although he moved to Rogers Park for the affordable housing, he stayed for the community that, he believes, has only been improved through revitalization efforts. In nine years, I've seen it get better. I, I, I live a block from here, and when I moved in here nine years ago, it was not unusual to hear gunshots two, three times a week within a block radius. I don't remember the last time I heard a gunshot now. It's been several years. I live right on Fargo and Greenview, so it's kind of like... If you go west, um, you see police getting everybody who sh probably shouldn't be out on the street doing bad things out of the area. And then if you go east, it's like perfect. Um, in this area, I think it's a really good thing, um, especially towards Howard and everything. So two thumbs up to the regentrification <laughs> project going on in Rogers Park. Uh, probably for the good, because I think it definitely increases just the overall, we're trying to say, you know, um, quality of living, I guess, in the area. You, know, you get more places to hang out and more restaurants and just, I think, a safer environment, too. What Charmers did for 
Jarvis Square was a wonderful thing. It really it brought some new life up there, and you know those other businesses too, the Irish uh, bar, the uh, Gruppo de Nietzsche, etc. So it's the private business people, really, who are not contributing everything, but who are doing a hell of a lot for the neighborhood by putting a presence into Rogers Park that makes it look better to people driving through or passing through, adds something to the life of, of people who live in the neighborhood. The people that are here, that have been here, they're very fond of it. They love it. There are a lot of activities and groups and people interested in, should I say, shoring up Rogers Park? making it a good place to live. Even so, some who work on the very projects transforming Rogers Park are apprehensive about the changes they facilitate. Chicago native David Bryan is the general contractor of a fitness center building project near the Jarvis L stop and worries about the negative repercussions of altering a neighborhood so drastically. It looks like they're kind of, well, with the condominiums, they're pushing out a lot of people, you know, that they can't afford to be in a condominium, you know, and they're trying to make this a more select area. For people that are hard to do or live week by week with a check, it's going to be a little hard for them to live here. It's, it happens. It's been happening forever. You know, you, they take an area that's poor, they revamp it, and then, you know, people got to go somewhere else. Look, people are going to get displaced through gentrification. I think the, the most we can hope to do, and we should work hard to do, is to make sure that any such displacement is gentle, not done illegally, and done compassionately. But to achieve those goals, you've got to walk a tight line. I think there's a lot of positive things going on. And life always changes. I mean, if Rogers Park is selling coffee now, instead of drugs, instead of prostitutes, you can buy a bottle of wine, or you can buy, I mean, is that bad? I don't think so.